consider the flow chart and answer the following question okay now the question actually it is given over here also but i'll write i have given over here if the flow chart is executed on the above box okay this box which is given right which of the box numbers will remain unchanged now 10 boxes are given and this flow chart is given so what you're going to do according to the box we are going to start solving as per the flow chart the first step is box 9 minus box 5 so box 9 is nothing but 1 minus box 5 is 5 okay number in box 5 is 5 1 minus 5 comes out to be minus 4 okay place the value in box 2 now this minus 4 is going to go over here okay it is going to be minus 4 right next if box 2 is greater than box 4 now box 2 is minus 4 box 4 is minus 9 box 2 minus box 4 so minus 4 minus of minus 9 okay what i'm going to get is minus 4 plus 9 that would be equal to positive 5 okay place the result in box 6 so this is box 6 i am going to put the result as 5 over here now box 6 divided by box 10 so it is 5 divided by 2.5 so that comes out to be 2 okay place the result in box 1 so box 1 already has 2 now it is again getting 2 only it is the same thing okay so sort of box 1 is the answer where the numbers will not change okay it will remain unchanged but still i'll go up to the last level box 1 multiplied by box 7 what is box 1 2 2 multiplied by what is box 7 3 2 3s are 6 now we have to put this result in box 3 put 6 over here so only box 1 sort of remains unchanged okay earlier it was 2 now also it is 2 answer is option c in the circuit given below if the switch 2 is in off position then which of the following statement is true now over here in this entire diagram okay switch 2 is compulsorily off okay this is off i'll write over here off right now off means zero okay off means zero and on means one now this is the symbol for or function this is the symbol of and function and this is the uh, symbol of not function so you might be very aware regarding the functions now not function okay uh, still I will give you uh, the diagram over here. If your input is 1, output is going to be 0. Exactly reverse. And if your input is 0, output is going to be 1. So on is the input, off is the output. Off is the input, on is the output. Okay. Now for OR function, uh, there are two inputs required. Okay. Based on that, there is one single output. Fine. So if the input is 1 and 1, that is on and on, output is going to be on. If the input is 1 and 0, output is on. If the input is 0 and 1, output is on, okay, and if the input is off, off, then only the output is off, okay. This is for OR function and exactly opposite for the AND function, right. The input and output sequence I will give you over here. Now, there are two inputs always, okay. So, if the input is 1 and 1, that is on and on, then only you are going to have the sequence on, that is 1, okay. If, if any one is 0 or if both of them are 0, output is always going to be 0 okay so for and function gate okay for to get the output 1 you always have to have both the inputs to be 1 that is on okay now let us see what the statements are the bulb will be on or off depending only on switch 1 now if you check out over here okay we have to check out regarding the switches now switch 2 is always off so this is always off so this is a not gate okay i'll write the gate names also over here this is not so that it becomes easier or or and fine so if this is zero this is always zero okay they have already given switch to is in off position this is always zero so this is going to be one if this is one or has this input as one any one input becomes one for or output is always going to be one so this is always going to be one this is always going to be one okay for or this is always one for all or again one input is one so output always has to be one so this bulb is going to remain always on answer is option c okay we didn't have to check anything we just had to trace okay over here the second one which was given that it is off we just had to trace it and we got the answer right it doesn't matter regarding switch one or switch three since this is always zero this is always one if this is always one this is also always one if this is or gate always one output will always be one this is again OR gate, Out, input is always 1, output is always 1, this is going to remain ON. 
which of the following statements is true regarding the circuit given below okay so this is always on that is one so this is going to be always one this is again uh, you can check out this is or function i'll write the gate names or this is going to be not okay this is going to be and right this is or again this is not okay now this is always one okay if this is always one output of this out or gate is always going to be one okay next if this is one input is one not get output is going to be zero okay we have already seen the diagram output will be opposite if this is zero this is zero even if one is zero this is always going to remain off the bulb will all this is always going to remain off okay it doesn't matter regarding whether this is zero now the, even if this is zero okay if this is zero it depends on the switch what the output of this or gate is going to be if the switch is off out or gate output is going to be off not gate is going to be on but already always zero is there in one side okay and you can check out the and gate what happens is that for and gate if even if one of the inputs is zero that is off output is going to be zero so this bulb is always going to remain off answer is option d which of the following statements is true regarding the circuit given below okay now over here there are two bulbs now the first only if switch one is on can bulb one be on let's try to see switch one is on they are saying okay if this is on this is i'll write the gate names again not this is going to be and right this is going to be or then again a not over here a or over here and a not over here okay now if switch one is on output of this switch is going to be off of this gate is going to be off if this is off that means zero and gate one input is zero output is going to be zero that means bulb one is not going to be on so if switch one is on bulb one is not on option a is useless next only position of switch three can decide whether bulb two remains on or not now position of switch three want that bulb two remains on or not when can bulb two remain on if the output over here is one okay if the output over here is one then only the bulb two is going to remain on when can the output be one say if this is zero and this is one okay then it is going to remain one right say uh, or other instances are also there but what i consider is that we are only considered with switch three now let us start with switch three let's say switch three is on okay that is uh, it is one input over here is one so output of or gate is going to be one output of not gate is going to be zero this zero comes over here so that means if this part is zero or one based on that bulb two is going to be on or off okay based on this part okay this wire which is there this input it is going to decide whether the bulb remains on or off now it means that only based on switching the switch three on we are not going to get the answer we also have to depend on switch two okay and switch one's result right now next let's try with off switch 3 off if switch 3 is off this is going to be zero this is going to be zero here again i have to depend on the output of switch 2 to get the output of the or gate whether it is zero or one right so switch 3 only switch 3 deciding bulb 2 remaining on is not possible okay we need a combination of all three of them sort of let's check out next one both the bulbs remain on or off together and can can never individually remain on now over here they are saying that both the bulbs have to remain uh, can remain on together that means both bulb 1 and bulb 2 light up or both bulb 1 and bulb 2 remain off okay it cannot happen that bulb 1 is on and bulb 2 is off or bulb 1 is off and bulb 2 is on okay this is what they mean by the statement let us check out whether this is possible or not now take the first case where the switch 1 is on not gate makes it off and gate is over here okay so bulb 1 is definitely going to remain off okay now we have to see whether we can switch on bulb 2 if we can switch on bulb 2 definitely we can get the answer now bulb 2 now this bulb 1 is off bulb 2 can remain on okay if any of the two is on or if both are on okay now the first input which is there over here it is dependent on this and gate which is dependent on switch 1 and switch 2 we don't want to rely on switch 1 we don't want to change anything related to switch 1 because we have switched it off okay we have switched the bulb 1 off so i'll just focus on the second input this second input is dependent on what switch 2 as well as switch 3 now over here switch 1 is on because of which this is off okay this is zero and by default you're getting the answer zero so switch 2 which is there 
anything can be the input over here so over here what i can do is i want this bulb to switch on okay so for this for the output to be one i have to get output one over here that means output should be zero over here okay when can i get an output zero over here if both switch three if switch three is off i can get zero and switch two is on when switch two is on it becomes off over here because of not gate this becomes zero zero and zero you get zero over here uh, because of this not gate this becomes one over here okay and this one gets uh, converted uh, through or gate and bulb 2 is on so there can be a situation where b1 can be on and b2 is, uh, sorry b1 can be off and b2 is on so this also is again not possible so answer is option d only if switch 1 is off and switch 2 is on can bulb 2 be on okay you can try it out we get this answer only okay it is only possible in that case otherwise what happens is that uh, say switch 1 if you turn off this is going to become 1 okay this is going to be 0 then not gate will make it 1 this one gets converted to AND gate and switch 2 is on so both switch 1 becomes on over here if switch 1 is on this becomes on and bulb 2 also remains on which number will come on top if the dice is moved by rolling one face at a time to the square where there is an arrow the opposite faces of the dice always add up to 7 okay now it is a fair dice okay that is the reason opposite faces of a dice always add up to 7 so since it is fair dice opposite to 1 is going to be 6 opposite to 2 it is going to be 5 opposite to 3 it is going to be 4 okay now over here what happens is that the dice is rolled one face at a time so what the the sequence of the dice is it is going to come over here from here it is going to go over here from here it is going to go over here from here to here here to here and here to the last point over here now there is no need to consider this dice even if you consider this dice still you are going to get the answer okay because this dice on rolling has come over here okay this is just to give you how the path has been traced i'll tell you how the path has been traced but first i'll get the answer now this dice is going to be rolled like this that means the six is going to go at the bottom okay so it is going to be like this the dice is going to look like this so six has gone up to the bottom three is going to remain as it is over here and this five has come over here okay opposite to six is what one opposite to three on this side is going to be four and opposite to 5 on this side is going to be 2. Now what happens is that this dice has to go in this direction. That means it has to fall in this direction. 4 is going to come in the bottom and 3 is going to come on the top. So it is going to be again like this. Over here the way dice is I am going to draw it. Okay. It is going to be like this. So over here on the other side what is 4 is going to be at the bottom. So 3 is going to be at the top. Okay. On the right hand side of 3 is 5 over here, fine, and opposite to 5 comes 2, right? Over here, now 6 was at the bottom, over here, 6 was opposite to 1, 1 has gone from the other side over here, so 6 is going to come on this side, okay? Now, again, it is going to get rolled such that 1 goes at the bottom, okay? So, 1 goes over here, 1 goes at the bottom, so how the dice is going to be? So, on the top face which is there, it is going to be 6, okay? So, what number will come in the top? Because if 1 is at the bottom, opposite definitely has to be 6. So, answer is option C. Now, over here, let us check out whether this dice on rolling comes to this position and whether we get the answers right. Okay. First of all, this is this face is going to go down. That means 5 is coming, going to come at the bottom over here. So, how it is going to be? I will show you the sequence. Now, 5 is at the bottom. So, on the top, it has to be 2. Okay. 3 is going to come at the top. Okay. Uh, from at the front okay this is going to come in the front right and one is going to remain as it is right so six is on this side four is over here one is over here and five is at the bottom over here right now it is going to fall like this okay from this position to this position it wants to go it is going to fall like this that means one is going to come in the bottom over here so i'm going to draw the dice right so this is going to be one so on the top surface it is going to be six right and over here 3 is going to remain on this side as it is and 5 is going to come at the left hand side and opposite to 5 is 2 okay 2 is going to come over here because 2 is going to fall down okay next it is going to roll down so and you are going to get this dice uh, sorry you are going to get this one so this you are going to get where opposite to 5 is 2 in the bottom 6 opposite side is 1 because it was at the bottom so it is going to rise up okay is as it is and from this side you are going to have 4 so this is correct okay this is how 
best way in exam to solve it is always keep an eraser with you okay square eraser not a round eraser okay try to keep a square block of eraser like this and you can or any square object or cube cubical object okay cuboid object you can keep and you can write the numbers over here and you can just roll the dice what i did over here was that i had a box of a bulb okay small bulb zero bulb which is there i had a box of it i just wrote numbers on it and i started tracing it very quickly in like 15 to 20 seconds i got the answer actually not even that hardly i got the answer in 10 seconds i just wrote the numbers it took me 5 to 10 seconds to write the numbers properly arrange it as per given over here then just roll it as per the given sequence and in 15 to 20 seconds i was able to mark the answer okay this is the way you can try to uh, save time have an eraser with you that is going to be really useful for the questions related to dice or a cube